What I'd like to cover in this video is modifications to the degree day method that we had derived in the previous videos. So if you remember previous videos we had something that looked like this where we were calculating the annual heating energy use and we had 24 times the design heat load over the interior temperature minus the outdoor temperature at design and if you wanted to get the fuel you just had to have the efficiency of the boiler or the heat pump whatever you're using for heating. The other way to look at this is to say that this design heat load divided by the design temperature difference is really a UA value and that this is equal to 24 UA degree days. And the 24 again is that this is in units of degrees F per day and these UA values typically have a per hour in them and so this 24 is a conversion between days and hours. So what is one limitation or what's an important consideration for what we've assumed with this? Well, one is that we're assuming that there's really no consideration for how much heat is created inside the building itself. So we just calculated some flow that we had and we said everything going out from the environment has to be met by the system. Well, that's not exactly true. Inside our building here, we, can, we could have all sorts of heat producing devices. A lot of times we have computers and fans and other electrical devices. This is all, these are all generating heat inside. Now the thought experiment is that say for instance you had a server room or you were just having a fire inside even if it's 10 degrees Fahrenheit outside or very cold you still may need cooling in this building because you have so much heat being generated inside the building itself and so this takes no consideration in for that this degree days is just a simple calculation from a static 65 degrees this is just design heat flow out of the building with regards to the temperature difference from the inside to the outside. So what we're going to do is we're going to modify this a little bit. So we're going to take this and we're going to solve for Q fuel and something that ASHRAE came up with and maybe in the ASHRAE fundamentals it's maybe a little bit different nomenclature depending on which place you find this. We have all these components again. But now they put a K term and a V term and a C D term. And I want to explain what all of these terms are doing. The K term here really is an extension of this idea. If you took we were solving for Q fuel, if you put this over onto this side you would have something on the bottom of the equation. And it's it's accounting for the effects of full load efficiency, part load performance, whether things are oversized, and different types. And so K is equal to 1 if you have electric resistance heating, 100% effective. Uh, K is 0.55 plus or minus 0 0.22 for gas heating. And could assume that K is 0 0.65 for, quote, newish, end quote, homes. Again, this is a factor that, again, is going to make your fuel usage go up. It's between 0 and 1. So at the worst case, 0 0.55 minus 0 0.22, 0 0.33, it's a third. It'll actually increase your fuel consumption by 300% or three times. What they also found is that this degree day was tending to over over predict fuel usage and they came up with 
this chart, Asher did, so it's, you can find it in Asher Fundamentals, where based on the degree days that you calculated originally using base 65, that you could basically get out this this coefficient here. And let me bring that plot over. Ooh, ooh. And here we go. Here is a plot showing that correction factor. So you have some Fahrenheit degree days here as your x-axis is your independent variable. And you can go up and you can find this this CD factor. And note that in most cases, yes, there's a plus and minus variation here, but for the most part, this band is below 1. And so that is going to reduce the amount of fuel consumption that a building would have with this method. Because if we notice here, CD is really on top of the fraction here. So this is typically less than 1. And the last thing is all this V here is for is this is a unit conversion factor. And so this will be whatever it needs to be to make your fuel units come out. So if your fuel was in MMBTU, you would get a different one. If it was in pounds of steam, you would get a different V. But all this is, this really is not adjusting the numerical value, it's just making sure that the units come out right. This whole method here, this was called the modified degree day method. So it basically used um, prior history and some observations to say, okay, look, here's some typical efficiencies for different types of systems, and here's a correction factor that we've found best fits all the data that we currently have. So let me scroll down, and what we want to go into next is this covering the concept of the balance temperature. For now, you've just taken for granted that a degree day is really is really this concept here but what was this 65 well really this 65 was representing a balanced temperature but it was static now you may say what is a balanced temperature well here this is what a balanced temperature is defined to be if we have our building again And it has heat sources inside. Oh, this is my best flame. Let's see. Put some yellow. This is heat being generated in the building. At, at there is at some point a balance where the heat being generated in the building is balanced by the heat leaving the building through the envelope. And that temperature that outdoor temperature that corresponds to that when this these two things are equal the Q internal is equal to the envelope load when that happens we have found the balance temperature and we say that that outdoor air temperature is now the balance temperature and that's an important concept in the sense that anything any temperature above the balance temperature we won't need any heating uh, below we, we may. So let's write this out. We're talking when the Q internal is equal to the Q envelope, which is equal to the UA value, the total UA value of the building, times T internal minus T balance. That's the, this is outside balance. And so now we can just solve for the balance temperature. And if you do a little bit of algebra, you'll find that the balance temperature is equal to Ti minus Qi over Ua total. 
So there you go, there you have it. Now we have a new balance temperature. So to make this a little even more clear, let's do a quick example. Let's say that our building has a UA value of 500 BTU per hour per degree Fahrenheit. And the internal heat gain is 5,000 BTU per hour. What is our T-balance temperature here? Let's assume that the interior temperature is 72 degrees Fahrenheit. Put this on top. BTU per hour over 500 BTU per hour. 3F. Well, this works. Do cancel. Cancel. The Fahrenheit comes on top. We're subtracting like things. We have 50 divided by 5, so that's 10. 72 minus 10. This gives us a balanced temperature of 62 degrees Fahrenheit. So now, instead of having 65 in here, really now we can put the balanced temperature that we've calculated for our individual case, which is here, 62. So now if we were calculating degree days, we, were, we would say January 1st, we would do 62 minus making up numbers now, that would be one day, and this is degree, and then we times it by one day, etc. throughout the whole year. And so now, when we do it, we can basically do the same thing we did before, except now this, these degree days, these degree days, we can put a subscript here. We're on a different base, a variable base. Now, this could be modified in the sense that you could figure out you could, if you knew your internal heat gain for every hour of the year, say now this varies with respect to time, you could figure a balanced temperature at every moment of time. And with that, we would have now this concept of the degree day being this variable, this very variable function. This is T outside. And this could be our new degree day calculation, which is going to be a more accurate representation of the building that you have in question. So I'm over my 10 minute mark, so we'll finish up. The degree day methods are very useful, and we started off with a very, very straightforward way of looking at things and people found that it wasn't accurate enough for their needs so they found new ways to make it better and they did that with efficiency factors correlations and coefficients that they found they modified the base temperature from a static 65 to something variable and in the end they found that these methods worked pretty well so this this concept here, using a, a new balance temperature, this is the variable base degree day method. So I hope that covers degree day methods for you, and see you in the next videos.